Hi students, how are you? It's Pete Posner here at Big Break English, your British English teacher. And today we're going to talk about the second conditional for IELTS speaking part three. OK, this is a complex structure that is going to help you get a band score seven or above. OK, so really useful. And let me take the opportunity also to tell you about my ebook. OK, so if you go to the link in the description, you can download my free ebook, 12 Tips for Scoring Higher on IELTS Writing Task 2. OK. OK, so apart from the second conditional today, also, we're going to look at a couple of ways to develop your answer for part three in speaking. And also one more thing is we're going to look at a few useful collocations on the topic of air travel and climate change. OK, so all that to come. OK, so we're going to look at using the second conditional, which is a complex structure. OK, so that's because if you look at the speaking descriptors uh, in the speaking part of IELTS, which you can find online, OK, to get a band score seven, it says that a candidate uses a range of complex structures with some flexibility, OK? And the second conditional is one complex structure which is good to learn how to use. It's a useful structure to use in the speaking. OK, so I'm going to show you how to use it in a, a flexible way and in a, in a natural way. OK, so here is an IELTS speaking part three question. OK, it says, how do you think air travel will change in the future? OK, and I'm going to be the candidate. OK, and what I want you to do is listen to my answer and listen specifically for where I use the second conditional. See if you can identify the second conditional. OK, are you ready? OK, so that's an interesting question. And to be honest, I'm not really sure what is going to happen in the future. But what I can say is this, if I if I were prime minister, I'd reduce significantly the number of aeroplanes emitting greenhouse gases. OK, because, you know, it's, it's very clear that we have to do a lot more to, to combat climate change. And aeroplanes have a very large carbon footprint. Right. So. Um, and I know that we can, you know, we can replace um, the fuel that, that is burned and releases these greenhouse gases with a cleaner fuel or more specifically a biofuel. For example, I know that um, there are there is a biofuel that is derived from tobacco plants. OK, so we really need to look for these types of cleaner fuels to in order to combat climate change and I really hope that this will happen in the future in the aviation industry. Okay so did you hear where I used the second conditional? Let's take a look at my response okay and we'll also look at some other features of the response. Okay so I started by saying okay so that's an interesting question and to be honest I'm not really sure what is going to happen in the future but so that first part there, I'm buying time, right? Which is a good strategy in part three, okay? So it's important to always keep talking. We don't want any long pauses, okay? Um, but you need some thinking time. So what you do is you, you buy some thinking time using these types of, this type of language, these fillers, right? Like. That's an interesting question. To be honest, I'm not really sure. Right? <clears throat> and then you're thinking about your reply and then you reply. OK, so. But what I can say is this. OK, so then I thought of something to say. Right. And look, this is where I incorporated the second conditional. Right. In bold. <clears throat> if I were prime minister, I'd reduce significantly the number of aeroplanes emitting greenhouse gases. OK, so um, as we're talking about the future, right, the second conditional is used to talk about unreal, 
hypothetical situations in the future. So things that are not likely to happen or almost impossible to happen. What I mean by that is in the conditional clause, right? If I were prime minister, it's unlikely or it's almost impossible. <laughs> I would say, in fact, it's impossible that I'm going to be prime minister. OK, so that's the conditional part of the second conditional. The other clause, the second part here is the result, right? So if I were prime minister, only if, and that's almost, well, that is impossible, I'd reduce significantly the number of aeroplanes emitting greenhouse gases. OK, so that's how I incorporate the second conditional into my answer. Let's look at a little bit more of my answer. And I said, um, OK, because, you know, it's very clear that we have to do a lot more to combat climate change. OK, two things there. In part three, you really have to develop your answer. So give reasons, give at least one reason for what you say. Right. So here, you know, something like because can introduce your reason. OK. And then also here, we're going to look at a little bit of useful vocabulary, useful collocations. Here we have uh, combat climate change. This means to fight against, to tackle climate change. OK. Um, and then I said, and airplanes have a very large carbon footprint. That's also a really useful collocation on this topic of air travel and climate change. Right? Carbon footprint is basically the amount of carbon dioxide gas that a person or an organization causes, right? Because carbon dioxide gas uh, is bad for the environment. It causes air pollution. So we, call, we talk about a carbon footprint. That's the amount of carbon dioxide gas caused by a person or an organization, right? In this case, we're talking about the aviation industry, right? Aeroplanes. So the av aviation industry is the industry responsible for aircraft. So machines that fly, for example, aeroplanes. OK, good. And then let's continue. So right so and now and sorry, right so. And I know that we can, you know, we can replace the fuel that is burned and releases these greenhouse gases again. Um, you know, good collocations here. Okay, so greenhouse gases are gases that cause air pollution. For example, carbon dioxide gas is a greenhouse gas. And this goes well with the verb release, right? Or we also had emitting greenhouse gases. So we have emit or release greenhouse gases so far, yeah. Also, we had combat climate change and we had a carbon footprint and also uh, we talked about the aviation industry okay um and yeah just another thing here so releases these greenhouse gases with a cleaner fuel or more specifically a biofuel okay for example okay so i said that it's important to develop your response one way is to give reasons, and the other thing that you should do is give at least one example. Okay, so you can use something like, for example, to introduce this. For example, I know that there are, there is a biofuel that is derived from tobacco plants. Okay, so we really need to look for these types of cleaner fuels in order to combat climate change. And I really hope this will happen in the future in the aviation industry. That last part, then, uh, you know, it's good to have a nice conclusion to naturally finish your answer and to, to let the, to clearly signal to the examiner that you finished. And here the strategy is that you go back to the original question, right? So the original question was, how do you think air travel will change in the future? So I'm going back to that question and answering directly. I really hope that this will happen in the future in the, avia in the aviation industry. Okay.
Okay, so we're focusing on the second conditional. And what we said was that we use the second conditional to talk about an unreal future, unlikely or almost impossible or impossible situation. Okay, um, the form, right, we have the if clause. Okay, so let's say this is number one, right? If I or you or etc a subject yeah i you he she it we they yeah plus the past simple now if it's the past to b it's for example i was right but sometimes we use were okay so um even though it's i i might say if i were or if i was to the past, if I was, or were, if I were, okay? And um, then the second clause, okay, is the main clause or the results clause, yeah? Again, so subject, are you, etc. Would or could, and if it's negative, would not or could not, okay? And then the verb, okay, and it's the verb infinitive without two okay um okay so let's look at an example to see how that works okay because um the exercise we're going to do here is a fill in the gaps exercise with the correct form of the verb in brackets okay let's first see if we can do the example together right so so we've got if i first part and then we want past simple or were, if the verb is be, ah, and it is be. So it's if I was or were, yeah. Okay, prime minister. And then the main clause, two. I, and then we want would or could, not plus the verb. And here we have, reduce okay so i would reduce and here we can use a contraction okay so i would i'd yeah i'd significantly reduce or i'd reduce significantly the number of airplanes emitting greenhouse gases okay okay let's look at that example again so if i were prime minister I'd reduce significantly the number of aeroplanes emitting greenhouse gases. Okay, so just two more points there. So firstly, just to remind you that that's, that is what we mean by a complex structure, okay? A structure that has two clauses, okay? So we've got one clause here, if I were prime minister, and a second clause here, I'd reduce, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the other thing to point out here is um, that also would test the candidate is tested on on his ability to use his or her ability to use these structures in a flexible way okay so one way to do that is to realize that you can change the order of the two clauses right so here we have first number one the if clause right and then number two the main clause or the results clause but we can change them around the other way and start with number two. So I'd reduce significantly the number of aeroplanes emitting greenhouse gases if, so then the first clause, right? If I were prime minister, okay. Okay, so let's do a little practice. So two exercises, remember you have to put the verb in brackets in the correct form in each sentence okay and as a second part here for number two can you change the order of the clauses and write it again write that sentence again okay so just take um three four minutes to do that pause the video and then we'll check together okay okay how did you do so number one okay so we start with the if clause so it's if remember 
plus the past simple or were. So here we have have to. So the past of have is had, right? So it's if I had to travel by plane a lot in my job. Okay, and then the second clause we want, we've got I, and we want would, could, if we want negative, we can use negative, and then the verb, which is the infinitive without to. Okay, so it's, and the verb is look for. Okay, so it's, and we can use the contraction. Remember that contractions we use more in speaking. Okay, and let's pretend that this is speaking. Yeah, so it's I'd, and then the infinitive without to, increase. Okay. Alternative ways to do business. Sorry, I'd look for alternative ways to do business. Okay, number two. So here we've got can. Okay, we've also got if. So it's the past of can is could. So if I could make changes to the aviation industry. Let's use the contraction again. Okay, so it's the contraction of I would and then the infinitive without to. Okay, so I'd increase the use of biofuel. Okay, now let's put those two clauses around the other way. Okay, so it's I would or I'd yeah, increase the use of biofuel if I could make changes to the aviation industry. Okay, if I could make changes to the aviation industry. Okay, and there we go. Okay. Okay, so here's how you can practice this on your own in speaking. Okay, so this is an IELTS speaking part three question, slightly different. How do you think tourism will change in the future? Okay, so what you can do is you can record yourself giving this answer. Okay then play back the recording to yourself and um, the idea is then to see if you use the second conditional in a natural way okay and also see if you if you develop your answer fully okay so with with a reason or reasons an example or examples okay and I look forward to seeing you for the next lesson Okay, guys, that's it. So I hope you found that useful today. And well, if you need any more help with preparing your IELTS, speaking or writing, remember you can book a trial lesson with me. So I'll leave the link in the description of this video. And also for writing, remember you can download my book, my ebook, 12 Tips for Scoring Higher in IELTS Writing Task 2. Okay, completely free, my gift to you. Okay, and I'll see you next time.